Hi, it's Rob with Precision Zone and welcome back into our facility. We just got this uh, Herco machine in and uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the procedure of checking the, the cables to the motors and the motors themselves. We'll see what type of condition they're in and if we need to, we'll, uh, we'll pull it all out, we'll fix it up, we'll put it back in. This way we'll have another machine we can test Yaskawa products on. So first, you want to, I have this machine locked out, tagged out so that it can't get any power to me. And I want to just emphasize the DC bus on all the drives. You want to make sure that you give the DC bus time to discharge, um, but we're going to go and double check that. Uh, even though I have the machine locked out, tagged out, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I check the RSTs and UVWs on the drive that I'm working on. That way we'll just double verify power. Okay. After I pull the UVW off, I'm going to go ahead and clean it with a uh, rag and some solvent of some sorts. And then we're going to go do our general megging procedure on the cables and the motors hooked together. And then we'll go ahead and move on to just the motor. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start off ch by checking the X axis by disconnecting the two plugs here. And we're going to take our multimeter and we're going to switch to AC. And we're going to check between R, S, and T just to make sure we don't have any power and we don't. And we're going to triple check between U, V, and W and we don't, but you can't check too many times. You'd rather check one too many than not enough. So we're going to switch our meter to DC volts and we'll check the DC bus. And we're showing nothing there. So now we know that we can't get hurt by the drive at all. So let's go ahead and unhook U, V, and W. If your wires aren't labeled, make sure you label them now. You don't want to play a guessing game on which one is which. And we want to go ahead and clean these terminals up. Make sure we get any grease grime or dust off of them. And now we're going to move on to our, our uh, insulation tester, our digital mega ohm meter or mega. This is our Hioki IR 4056 and you have to find a suitable ground. I use the cabinet ground underneath the, uh, underneath the spindle drive. So we'll go ahead and turn it to a thousand volts. Remember, we always use a thousand volts when we're checking for insulation. And let's check W. So we're at 4,000. We'll check V. We're at 4,000. And we'll check U. And we're at 4,000. So at this point, now that we've checked U, V, and W, and we have 4,000 mega ohms. At this point, if you were troubleshooting a problem, you would stop and say that it's perfectly fine. Now we're gonna pretend that this was bad and that we got a grounded problem. And so we're gonna check the cables and then we're gonna check the motor. So let me go ahead and disconnect the uh, cable from the motor and then we'll go ahead and check that. Now we're inside the machine and I want to overemphasize that you need to disconnect the cables from the drive otherwise you're going to damage the drive. All right. So now we're here on the X axis and I have removed a ton of way covers to be able to get access to the servo. Now, if you can kind of see inside here how really gnarly and nasty this is, I can almost guarantee that the way covers weren't properly installed. And this is why it is super duper important that you must put the way covers back on and that you put them on correctly. I almost can't believe that this motor has 4,000 4, megs to ground. Um, but luckily for the customer that we got it from, it did. So what we're going to go ahead and do is from the cable, from the cannon plug side, we're going to go to D, which is ground, and then we'll check U, V, and W, assuming we're still 
troubleshooting a problem. And then if that were to be good, then we'll go ahead and do D on the pin of the motor and we'll go UVW and check for a grounded motor. Let's go ahead and like I said, we're pretending we're having a problem. So I'm showing you guys how to, how to troubleshoot this. We're gonna find the D pin here, which is our ground. And then we're gonna go U, V, W. Now, this isn't a surprise for us, but let's pretend we were grounded inside the, the cabinet. Now we've automatically isolated the cable, saying the cable's good. And we'll go ahead and verify that the motor is grounded before we spend all that time tearing it out. Four thousand, four thousand, four thousand. Okay, then at this point we should have found a grounded motor. Don't forget to discharge, discharge that coil. So at this point, you sh if we were chasing a problem, you should have found a problem with the motor, which wouldn't have been a super surprise considering how dirty this thing is. But we've already know, and then at that point, you would wanna pull the motor and send it an in for repair. And remember, we recommend anything under 300 mega ohms, a, a cause for to send it in and have it properly evaluated. Well, I hope this video was helpful so that you can use it to better troubleshoot your machine in the future. But if you have any questions, please check us out at precisionzone.com. There you can find our phone number and contact us at any time. We can give you more information about how to do this if there are any questions. So as always, we perform free motor evaluations and we pro provide 12 month warranties on all motor repairs. Thanks for watching.